I have put in four and a half cc's of um, alcohol into this. That's as much as it'll hold. And I'm now using this to preheat this. I have another one and a half cc's in the syringe as a reserve. Normally, I have used more than this to um, to do these tests up to a half ounce. Now, one of the advantages of having one of these syringes with a long needle is that it is possible to um, add more alcohol if necessary without having to disassemble anything. I may go ahead and try this anyway just to see what happens. I'm now adding another one and a half cc's. This will bring it up to a total of six cc's for preheating. Let's see what happens if I try to open this up. That's what happens. I'll try another three cc's of alcohol. A, 30, uh, a 3 7 jet is asking a lot to try to start up a kerosene stove. That's just a lot of. That's a lot of uh, a big orifice. Now, even though this is producing a yellow flame, it is roaring, which is generally a good sign. If you don't get any sound at all, that's a bad sign. That means that you're not getting any gas. I can see this is going to be a difficult stove to work with, with kerosene, with this size jet. It should never take this long to warm up. I've actually got this down as far as it'll go in order to try to minimize the amount of liquid fuel that's getting into the burner or into the generator. As soon as I try to increase the output though, this is what happens. The plate is red hot which means that this isn't really a matter of um, preheating issue. Now that is not an ideal flame for anything. It should not be yellow at all. So this is an obviously very rich jet. Uh, that I'm using. 
and this is at sea level. You could well imagine what would happen if this was at a higher elevation where you have less oxygen to work with. So a 3.7 jet is not going to work uh, for kerosene. And if I ever locate the 28 uh, jet that I lost, I will repeat this using the smaller jet. Needless to say, for a simmer, this is terrible. There isn't any simmer. Not really. So with a large jet like this, it will run. But it requires basically a full open position. Apparently the high velocity pulls in enough air so that it will combust. Uh, more completely at a much lower velocity, which would be a low setting. It doesn't have enough to pull in the air, and therefore it, 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 it burns way too rich. I would say that this is usable to boil water or something like that, but other than that, I don't think I would want to play with it. All right, let's see what happens if we start this up. Well, this is what happened last time, and I think it's because primarily of this uh, large jet, which is, I don't think uh, is, is optimal for this particular type of stove and fuel. But as you can hear, it's roaring, which is generally a positive sign. As last time, I will now reduce the flow very low so that it has a chance to kind of catch up. And now let me remove the top and the lid. Now as last time, it was pretty hot uh, and yellow. This is also a test for these legs. I have these uh, titanium um, protectors to see whether or not this will assist in preventing uh, deformity of the leg. Now this is opening it up all the way. And I'll add some more air.
unfortunately, I did not get this on um, video. Right before this segment, I had a huge amount of flames. And that was because I tilted the bottle down slightly so that I made sure that I was getting a full line because there wasn't that much kerosene in here. And got this huge flame. So I turned the thing off and then as the flames were dying down, I just simply opened it up a little bit and it came back to life just like you see it. The 37 jet apparently will allow enough fuel to get in through the line that it will overwhelm the generator at one point, which is exactly what happened with this. Now this has probably had a negative effect on the jet uh, from the previous videos I have on kerosene. Uh, the jets can clog off and when they do, it narrows the orifice, effectively making the diameter smaller than the original size. So this is probably not 37 anymore, 0 0.37 millimeters. It's probably closer to the 0 0.28, which is probably then what you could expect to see if this was in fact running the 0 0.28 jet. But I will do a separate video clip that shows the, uh, the 0.28 millimeter orifice all by itself for both gasoline and kerosene. This is shutting it down. videos that I've done on this, the shutdown routine gives you a, an idea of what you can expect as far as the, um, the orifice clogging off. If it takes a long time to shut down compared to a fully normal, this is actually going pretty quickly for this particular type of orifice, so this was probably not clogging off a lot. 